we come to love one another as our Lord commanded. 1 John 3.23, and this is his command, to believe in the name of his son, that is the father's son, and to love one another. Hallelujah. This is a wonderful, beautiful command. Only something we can do by coming in contact with the Holy Ghost. How do you come in contact with the Holy Ghost? By bringing yourself to the word of God, which is his son, Jesus. Getting to know who Jesus is. Amen. That is important. When you get to know who Jesus is, the Father will draw you and you will be wonderfully put together. When the Holy Ghost get in, you will start just allowing things that don't mean no good in your life to be separated from your life. Hallelujah. That's important. That is very well important. Today, we're going to be looking at a beautiful word. There are many things out there. Many people want to know because they're not in the spirit. Are we in the second covenant? This is important. Yes, we are in the second covenant. But many, if you do not have the spirit, you're not going to know what the second covenant is. You're not going to know when it starts. You're not going to know what it's about. You're going to be blind to it. The gospel is foolishness to those. You hear me? That parent. So if you're in the carnal and you're on your way to perishing, you know, the gospel is going to be foolish to you. you Amen. That's plain and simple. That is the words of our Lord and Savior. Amen. So as we pray in, we ask Sister Lindy, can you pray us in, Sister Lindy? Amen. We're going to give him a good, wonderful word. Title, In the Sight of the Heathen. Oh my goodness, it almost wasn't going to let me get off mute. Hi, Thank Sister Linda and Brother T. How y'all doing today as well? Hi. Hi, gentlemen. How are you? God bless you, brother. brother Dewan. How was everybody? How was everybody? We're good, Brother T. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Brothers, us. So, so Father God, we want to thank you and praise you for the gift and the blessing of waking us up this morning. And I pray that we were all uh, blessed throughout your day with everything that you provide for us, everything that you are, everything that you do. Thank you for holding me particularly, but I pray that you, you held everybody in your righteous arms and, and got them through the day with comfort and peace and joy. Father God, we thank you for the ability to come together to study your word, which is the truth. We praise you and we thank you that we have this Bible study, Iron Sharpens Iron, to come together and sharpen each other in your word, Father God. We praise you and thank you for that opportunity. Please fill us with the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit run through us. Guide us, teach us, pray with us, protect us, and comfort us. We praise you and thank you. We love you, Father God. We love you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit, with all of our heart, our soul, our mind, our strength. And I, and I pray that you know that we in, are eternally grateful for you being the breath that we breathe, for causing us to breathe. For being our um, sustainer, our provider, our redeemer, our teacher, our guider, our faith, our hope, and our protector and our comforter. You are our everything, Father God. We can do absolutely nothing without you. Please let your word permeate through us tonight and write it on our heart so that we're able to recall and put it into action. Father God, we thank and praise you for this Bible study. Please bless everyone who is here tonight, everybody who is on the phone or um, checking out the, the live feed on this, um, Father God, and those that will be watching later. Please bless everyone, Father God. Be with them. Tonight is they we all need you every second of every night. Please bless us 
by putting us in your loving arms throughout the night, keeping us healthy and safe. Father, thank you and I praise you for your word in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Beautiful prayer. Beautiful prayer. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Adolf, she's a one of the things that we're looking at today as we get in our beautiful word, we're going to look at, just reflect on Luke. Jesus healed the 10 lepers. Only one came back to him. The other nine kept going. Jesus made a good point when letting us see that the kingdom of God is not with observation. When you hear people today, they want to know, like the lady at the well, where are we going to worship at? You told us to worship in the mountain. You told us to worship in Jerusalem. Jesus let her know the real worshipers is going to worship God in spirit and in truth. That is within yourself. Because back in Luke, when Jesus told the leper that was healed, the kingdom of God is not with observation, not looking out where you're going to go, but the kingdom of God is within. What is Jesus letting us know? The guy who turned back decided to connect himself to the vine, which is Jesus. See, a lot of people are being touched by the spirit, but they're not doing what John 15 says, and that is staying connected to the vine. The way that you please the father and his son Jesus is to continue connecting with the vine so you can continue to build in fruit. The leper turned back, one of them out of 10. Hallelujah. And decided that on his way to go get healed or on his way, like Jesus told him to go and see the priest, Jesus healed him. And he noticed it and turned back to connect himself with the vine, which is Jesus. This is important. Many are asking, are we in the second covenant? Yes, we are in the second covenant. The second covenant don't start when you get to heaven. The second covenant starts right now, like we titled, in the sight of the heathen. See, God is going to do a work on you right now in the sight of people who are watching so they can see that their blessing is here and they can connect themselves as well. It don't start when you get to heaven. It start right now. What good is it to, to start when you get to heaven so everybody else that's looking on can miss it? It starts right now. Amen. Let us look at a couple words. Let us take our time and go slowly and look at this. Right here in Isaiah 11. Starting at 10 and 12. And in that day, this is the father speaking to Isaiah. There should be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an enzyme. So we see there is a root coming out of Jesse. That is Jesus coming out of the house of Judah. And he shall stand for an enzyme. An enzyme is a sign of the people. To it shall the Gentiles see. Don't let nobody tell you that just because you're a Gentile, you can't come to the word. It says that sign the Gentiles shall seek and his rest shall be glorious. See, that's why you got to get to know the word for yourself. Don't let nobody deter you from coming to Jesus when you are eligible. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand a second time to recover recover the remnant of his people. So first of all, you've partaken of the sign. When I got born again in Jesus, I partook of the first sign. When he come back, guess who he's coming again? The people who partook of his sign the first time. It said he shall set his hand a second time, mean he's coming again. And he's going to get the remnant of the people who've been worshiping him, praising him, and who have received of the Holy Ghost which he shall be it says, the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria, from Egypt, from Petros, Cush, and from Elam, Shinar, from Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. So all of this is just saying is this, all the people that have partook of the sign of Jesus that's been scattered abroad. God is going to bring them all collectively. Amen. And he shall set up and sign for the nations and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel. Then after that, Jesus is coming for the outcasts of Israel. But guess what? 
outcasts of Israel, you still have to seek the sign, which is Jesus. And gather together dispersed out of Judah and from the four corners of the earth. So we see Jesus is coming out of, out of the root of Jesse for a sign for the Gentiles and for the outcast of Israel and Judah. But you have to partake of the sign. That is Jesus Christ. Amen. Partake of the enzyme, which is a sign right now. And when Christ comes back the second time, he is going to gather us. That's beautiful right there. There's some people who don't know this basic scripture right here. They'll listen to somebody say they're not in the word, they're not eligible, and leave people to see right here. The Gentiles can seek the sign, and his rest shall be glorious. Amen. That's beautiful right there. That is beautiful right there. Amen. Amen. And that's beautiful to know that scripture. Hallelujah. Now, since we got many people putting Jesus down, putting that name down, oh, he's a white man. Oh, the book is not for us. Oh, this is that. Oh, this is that. Some stuff I don't even want to say it because it's, it's ridiculous. But in that same token, they want to teach you about God. <laughs> and this is what killed me. Let's look at this man Hey, the world puts what down. you doing? You're not getting that. Go eat your food. I'm sorry, yo. Man, I wanted to say, like, Derek, you're right. Yes, you're so right, bro. Oh, just because, man, like I say, you know, I see the internet. You heard me? Right. And it's amazing, bro. Like, look, man, I see God work in the lives of people that are close to me. I see God work in people like, look, I was just talking, man, about maybe 20 minutes ago about something that I remember Mr. Sam said, but I remember you and your wife saying it as well, man. Obedience mm -hmm. is better than sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Listen, when you can, I don't care who it is, right? Man, God works for, God work on God's time. Right. You know what I'm saying? So we have to really allow ourselves to come to subject and want to be checked. Right. You gotta want to be right. corrected. Right. You hear me? Listen, right. every look, we have to. We have to come to this understanding. Right, right. We do. Until we come to that, man. Listen, we, you know, it, it's gonna be what it's gonna be. Right. And I just, you know, I pray that people come to the understanding of it before it's too late. Mm -hmm. And look, I'm not saying as long as you got life in you, it's not too late. But man, the mm -hmm. stuff that they're being put out down on there right now, man, I'm telling y'all, man, that's beautiful. Man, man. Said before it's too late. God has given us time. All of us. You know, all of us has been given time. You still opening your eyes, you still here. And because God is his grace has allowed us to be here. And this is what we have to see. And God is sending the word to you, telling you, hey, no fornication. Go look up what no fornication means. Are you in the household with somebody you ain't married to? But you still choose to get up every day after you heard that word where no fornication can come to the kingdom of God. But you will still get up every day with this individual knowing you ain't married and you in fornication. That should be scary to you. See, that's like Dwayne said, hearing the word and being obedient to it. It's better than sacrifice. Yes, you might hurt. Yes, you might go through it, but look at you picked that situation when you was in your sinful nature. God didn't pick that for you picked that. So just like how you picked wrong, when you hear right, you got to do right. Now, I grant it that you put up time and time again, because the gospel does tell us that if one is saved, you can ultimately end up walking right in front of that individual and, and help water and implant. So God can say that into but that's true. But you better hurry up and make a decision before they allow Satan in the door and Satan destroy everything. So that don't mean you keep waiting, wait, 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 wait. You make a conscious decision to save yourself, to save your life. Because as soon as the devil get in there, it ain't gonna be, it's gonna be, it's gonna be over. Hallelujah. That's a decision that we all have to make. Close those doors up to Satan. Put the put the sock in those 
areas of the holes where Satan is trying to get through. Close those doors up. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Let us look at this man right here in Luke 4, starting at 16. Went back to his hometown in Nazareth. And like his custom is, he went into the synagogue. Look at him, get the word and open the book up and go straight to himself. Look what this man came to do that was sent from the father. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was. See, that was his custom to go in there. He didn't have to wait and say, hey, do I need to go here or let me get a prayer and wait before I go here. That was his custom to do this. This is what he did is what that means. He went up into the synagogue and on the Sabbath day stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Esaias. When you see that book, Esaias, that is Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it is written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Amen. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted. So we got the poor, we got the brokenhearted, and to preach deliverance to the captives. What are captives? That is people that are in bondage. I used to be in that bondage, drinking, smoking, recidivism, in and out of jail. That is bondage. These people are here enjoying this life. And that don't mean that they're with God because they're enjoying this life. Because you see who he came to get. Not the ones who don't need a physician, but the ones who are sick. Look at their poor in spirit, their captives, they're in bondage. And recovering of the sight to the blind. To set at liberty them that are bruised. So we see the people that they're talking about. Jesus, I should say that they're talking about. He'd been sent from the Father to do all of this, but they talk bad about him. And they expect to be healed, but they talk bad about Jesus. And this is his purpose to come and to heal you, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down and look at these. And all eyes of them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. Jesus just opened the book and pointed to himself what the father had did by anointing him and what to come do. And they all kept looking at him. That's deep right there. Now, I'm not going to go any further, but I'm going to just elaborate a little bit on my understanding of the word. And that after that, their eyes was fastened on Jesus. Guess what they did? They got so mad at Jesus, they tried to drive him off a cliff. But Jesus came down on the middle of them and kept preaching the word. Hallelujah. Some people are going to be pricked when you give them the truth. They're going to be pricked when you give them the truth. But guess what? Even if things got close to the edge, if it ain't your time, guess what? You ain't going over the edge. You ain't going over the edge if it ain't your time. You'll come right down the middle of them like Jesus did and continue the word. Continue preaching. Hallelujah. But look what Jesus said. And he began to say to them, this day, this scripture is fulfilled in your ear. Clearly, the Father sent Jesus to reconcile us to him. So if you're going about not understanding who Jesus is, not understanding that name, you need to sit down so you can learn, so you can get your salvation. Plain and simple. This is, I've, I've noticed a lot of people on the internet, they've, they've become a mockery. This is just whoever can open their mouth and, and act like they can preach the word. No, this is not this type of understanding. This is not. At John 1, starting at 10, he came to his own, but they received him not. Talking about this tribe of Israel, the foe. So look what Jesus did. All to them that received him gave he power to become the children of God. You need power to become the children of God. What is this power? This power is once the Father draw you to Jesus, you're going to be open to the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is going to get inside of you. The Holy Ghost is going to start taking all of that detestable stuff out of you. All that drinking, fornication, smoking, all of that stuff that we was doing in the world, the Holy Ghost is going to come clean you up. And it's a process. It's an ongoing, continued process. I ain't where I used to be, but look where I'm at now. And I praise the Lord for that because he is still working in this hour. Amen.
Hey man, hey man, that's a good one right there, Derek. Huh? We ain't where we used to be. Right. That's a good one, boy. Listen, and it don't happen overnight. Don't the happen. race is not for the Swiss. Mm. Hey, it was one point in time in my life when I used to be able to. You know, I remember some things that have been going away from me. Right. I uh, you know. I didn't realize it until it was maybe like a couple of years later that, man, I don't do that no more. Right, right. right. You know, I still have things that I struggle with, but listen, like you say, I ain't where I used to be. Yeah. I ain't where I used to be, man, and, and I'm grateful for those things, you hear me? But guess what I do know? I used to beat myself. Because when I first converted, uh, I figured, now I'm perfect. I can't be keeping, you know what I'm saying? But what you realize is through the process is that, nah, it don't work yeah. like that, man. Right. Hey, waiting on you. You know, you're going to, you won't get out of this life un, 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 untouched. Yeah. You're going to have to go through some things. Um, you know, and there's going to be some things that you're going to be able to get rid of real quick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's gonna be some things you gonna get. You, like I said, you won't even know it's gone. Mm -hmm. You won't when when you when you think about it. It's gonna be for a second, but it's like the taste never was there. All right. All right. Mm -mm -mm. He is our help, Bro. and you need to understand he is our help. It's like the way you're saying when we come into the knowledge of Christ. And the power of Christ start working in us, it's a process. During this process, you're going to be noticed you're not doing certain things. During this process, you're going to be noticing, you know, you don't go after certain things. You don't do this. You don't do that. And that's good because the work is working with us. You know, and, and a lot of people don't really understand as we continue to join ourselves and connect ourselves. It, it's the power of Christ is working through you to heal me. The power of Christ is working through me to heal you. Remember your gift you got ain't for you. It's for the body. So Dwayne might decide to wake up and God give him a word and he put that word on his heart and he come deliver that word and that word pierced me and touched me right where I'm at. And he delivered it. God made a way to deliver it through him. So just like 1 John 1, 7 says, if you walk in the light as he is in the light, talking about Jesus, you will have fellowship with one another. And the blood of his son, Jesus, is able to clean us from all sin. That's because in the fellowship, there's born again believers there and God is working through that to restore humanity. God is working through that to continue to cleanse us, to continue to show us where we need to work at. And just like Dwayne said, it's a process. This is not an overnight process. This is gonna be a process that we're gonna be working all of our life. And we thank God for that. Amen. If it wasn't, guess what? If it was an overnight process, we'd be out of here and gone already. And then who's gonna be here to help the people that had, the people that need it? Amen. So hey. thank God, he give us time. Yeah, thank God for time. Something else too. Um, everybody's story is different, mm -hmm. but everybody's story is for somebody. Amen. Somebody needs what you went through. Somebody need to somebody need that because that's the, that's what's going to help them get converted. Right. See, yeah. A person that doesn't have a story, oh man, that's kind of <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Uh, Doctor Miles Monroe say somebody say they ain't never have been tempted on or uh, got no struggle, run. That's a dangerous person. You know, <laughs> you know, but I'm telling you, your story is unique. Right. Only yeah. you, I'm on the, listen, I'm on the phone. Your story is unique and only you can give your story and nobody else give your story and nobody else tell you how your story went. Only yes. you can. Some stuff you're going to go through in your life ain't even going to be, ain't even about you. Right, right. <laughs> I like that, Dwayne. There's a difference between having testimony 
by overcoming by the blood of the lamb. When you say that, Dwayne, the Lord prompted me to go get this because it's, it's written. Just like when Jesus stood up and pointed to the word, when he opened the book, look, at you open the book and go point to that exactly word, what you're talking about. There's a difference between having a testimony by overcoming by the blood of the lamb than people just spewing war stories out. Right here at Revelations 12 and 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb in the word of their testimony. See, that testimony is going to always be pointing how Jesus delivered you. Not myself. Not just a war story or how the car flipped over. In that car flipping over, you're going to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus delivered me. Jesus helped me out of that. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. Well, that's important. You know that we share our testimony, the things that we go through. They're not just we're going through them just because. No, they're going through just like Dwayne said, because there's somebody out there going through that same thing that need to hear your testimony. So you don't need to have shame that that happened. You don't need to have, you know, uh, uh, self-hate because you went through an ordeal. When you come into the knowledge to understand why you went through your situation, then you can understand that it was valuable for you that you take your testimony and you go share that testimony. Amen. So people can be delivered out of the same thing that you went through. Point to the blood of the lamb who got you through it, who's still keeping you, who's still holding on to you. Like we always say, you would know if you were, don't belong to God because you will be not connected to God. You will be connected to the world that we once knew, what we once participated, what we once shared in. That is the purpose of why when Jesus left them, his, his, his apostles, they went back to what they knew. See, when the spirit of God leaves you, you're going to go back to what you know. That's how I know that the Lord is still holding you. See, sanctification is big because when the Lord is still holding you, you're not going to participate and the thing that he brought you from. And yes, you will continue on in that saving grace power, his word, his fellowship. Just like this week, we'll be fellowshipping with our brother and we'll be going out to eat lunch like we do. That's important. We don't need a building to go do that. We're the building. We got each other. And God is going to continue to bless us. It don't matter. It ain't got to be 50,000 people here because we know through the word, through prophecy, that in time, that Lord's house is going to be set on the hill and all the nations shall flow to it. That means as we continue to go in the world, as the world continue to manifest, it's going to get so dark out there, people are going to be looking for the word of God. And guess what? Us who've been here for years and years, practicing, studying, fellowshipping, strengthening, guess what? Y'all got to be ready, moderators. Because they gonna, you're going to be needing. People are going to be coming in here. Y'all going to have to control the chat line. Y'all going to have to control the people. Y'all going to have to make sure that things is at a level of understanding with Jesus. They coming in. You ain't got to worry about that. This is practice right now. We getting ourselves ready and strengthened so that day, as the world continues to get dark and dark, guess what? They're going to be flooding up in here. They're probably going to the ring, the little button up right here, probably going to be need to be reset. Because this is the only thing to say, the word of God. Amen. John 8 and 33, Jesus told the Jews, if you continue on in my word, then you are my disciple and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. This is the only thing to set you free is the world, the word. It ain't going to play for the Huskies. It ain't going to play for the Mariners. It ain't going to the car show. It ain't going to work. It ain't going to do none of that. Only the word saves you. Your, your money is going to be no good in a world where you need the gold that's been tried in the fire. Revelation 3.18. Jesus said, I counsel for you to buy from me gold that's been tried in the fire so that you may be rich with right raiment and the shame of thy nakedness do not appear and anoint thy eyes with eye salve so thou mayest see. We're going to get into time to where you're going to need that. You're going to need that Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego with that fourth one in there that looked like the son of God. You're going to need him. 
And the day when this world continue to continue to get dark and dark, you're going to throw all that money and stuff away because you're going to find out you've been out there in the sea without the right paddle. <laughs> you've been out there with the wrong paddle. <laughs> See, in this game right here, the money can't save you in this one. You need the blood of the lamb. You need Jesus Christ for this one. And this is the goal that we always been pointing to. And the only reason why I could point to this because I met him. That's how. See, if you ain't met him, then you don't know that. You'll be out there fishing for something else. But when you know him, you know what's important. Our riches ain't here. Our riches is in the kingdom of God. And if they knew that here, that they can take that money that they have and store up treasure in heaven where it don't grow old or get mobbed. But many people don't know that simple scripture that you could take Satan's money that he's given you and you can actually take care of God's people and store up treasure in heaven. Just like Cornelius praying and giving alms, God set him on the path to salvation. Go down to one Simon's house. Peter's down there. He got a word for you. Guess what that word was? You and your household shall be saved. Man, that's an awesome word when you hear that one. Man, God is not a respecter of man. Man, man, man. So I'm sorry for veering off, but that was the word that I had to go out and get because, man, mm -mm -mm. right here, Ezekiel 12, the word of the Lord, starting at one, also came to me saying, Son of man, thou dwellest in the midst of a rebellious house. We dwell in the midst of a rebellious house. And this is the Lord is talking to Ezekiel, talking about the house of Israel. This ain't nothing changed. We dwell in the midst of a rebellious house, which have eyes to see, but not see. And they have ears to hear, but they don't hear. For they are a rebellious house. Now, the reason why you can have eyes to see and ears to hear is because that's something naturally that you come with. But when you allow for the Holy Ghost, bring yourself to Jesus, allow for the Holy Ghost to open your eyes up. You allow for Jesus who told you, I counsel you to buy from me gold that's been tried in the fire. Then you can see, then you can hear. We're talking about with understanding now. There's many people out there, they read the word, they know how to recite the word, but they don't understand the word because understanding cometh by the Lord. That's what he said, where he's going to, uh, all those who, who received of the power have become the children of God. Now, know that this power works in many ways. Yes, this power is to, to, to lay hands on the sick and to recover. Yes, this power is to refrain from indulging in the cares of this life, the fornication, the drinking, the scamming, the scheming. This is what the power will keep you from doing. And like Dwayne always said, your greatest testimony. Your greatest testimony might not be to go lay hands on the sick and to recover. But guess what? Even though you shall do that, because the scripture said you can do that. But guess what? When you look in that mirror, that's the biggest one, your life. And that brings us to our word right here. At Ezekiel hey, 15 hey, and 16. Go ahead, brother. No, I, was, I was thinking about, uh, you know, how, you know, a perverse nation will want to see miracles. Hey, you know, man, there's miracles all around. Mm -hmm. I got a big miracle. I got a big miracle that I know everybody know. It's I know everybody had this thought in the mind. If there <laughs> ain't no God, if there ain't no God, how did we get here to where we are? Right. We had to come from somewhere. We have to come from something that's greater than us. Mm. We can't just say that there ain't no God. Listen, yeah. if that's the case, I should, we all should be able to. Right now, there's a lot of us struggling financially, right. mentally, and spiritually. Check this out. Mm. If that was the case, we should be able to blink our eyes and change it within a snap of a finger. Or with even just of the thought, 
Now, through time of doing certain things, we can come to this point, but we got to have a greater belief in ourselves. Man, it ain't nobody through God. Mm -hmm. Listen, and without God, he wouldn't give Jesus. So we here do that. I mean, it, it, it can go on and on about it. The miracles that have been done. But we have to be held accountable. We have to come to obedience and say, I got to put down this Right, right. The, 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 reason, the reason the Gentiles, the reason God chose the Gentiles is because God seen where the Gentiles will be in obedient. Oh, uh, so you know what? Israel, yes, you are still my people. But guess what? I've been going back and forth with y'all. Y'all to kill more animals for sacrifices than anything. About Israel. Here it is. About got, Israel. Yes. Here it is. You got these people over here that I, I don't even see them making no sacrifice. I just keep seeing them praying. Hold on. Wait a minute. Same thing. No. Hey, Peter. I know I need you to go somewhere. Peter seen a dream three times while he was on the roof. Peter was arguing with God. Telling God, God ain't nothing clean. Ain't that listen, God, that ain't clean. I don't eat that. And God tell him. Anything I make, anything that I done made is good. Man, that's all of us. We all come from that. I don't care who you are. People say you, people got all kind of stuff, man. It's all kind of stuff right here on the internet telling you this and telling you that. Man, come on, listen. I'm simple. Let's see this simple form. Yeah. <laughs> and everybody got no argument with this simple form. Right. The only thing you say is, ooh, you right. So you saying this and this and this and that. Listen, let's go back to basics. Right. Yeah. So I mean, if I take an egg and crack it, it'll fry. But if I take a spoon, and stir it up. It's called scramble. Come on. Show me. <laughs> Come on, let's go back to basics. Amen. Sister Lindy, Brother T, you got anything you want to elaborate on that? Hey, man, it makes a lot of sense, man. We just got to quit going, you know, putting our own thoughts to what it says in the Bible. That's what I'm getting. You know, people take out what the word says and they start putting it their own twist to it. Amen. Yeah. I, I agree a hundred percent um with all that you guys have been talking about tonight. Um yeah. We need to stay in God's word. We need to be able to um go out and and uh look for the for the first fruits, uh, find out what's true and it's not true. If it's not in scripture, it's not true. Scripture is God's word, and the word was God. Right. There's just no debating that. There's no questioning that. It is right. and will always be right. God's word. Yeah. So we need, we need to be sanctified in this word. Amen. And look, Amen. I'm all be honest, and I always this like this is my opening line to a person that God will take me, boy. He'll take anybody. Listen, I'm telling you, boy. Who? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Listen. So so don't don't think that. Just because you're in a place and you thinking that, man, but I'm not good enough. Yes, you are, because you're breathing. That's right. And you know what? God has continued to bless me, even in my mess, regardless my, of my mess, whatever. Yeah. He, matter of fact, matter of fact, he won us in our mess. The, the, yes. purpose, of, the purpose of our mess right. is for the give to somebody else. Amen. So they can say, man, I'm Amen. seeking Jesus too. Yes. If my yeah. brother or my sister, listen, I used to be on the corner with them. Right. Right. 
if I, if he can come from it, ah, let me try. Let me get some of that. Look, Simon. Yeah. He, what Simon said? Simon said, "How can I buy some of that? Right, right. It ain't I, buying. It ain't. For, it don't cost nothing. You just gotta I do like, your time." Yeah, I like your opening statement. By the way, <laughs> if he if he can accept someone like me, hello. <laughs> and I'm yeah, telling that's great. You, that's great. I love that. People are being seduced by seducing spirits. And the Lord let us know that that's going to come. So when yeah. people are seducing you, instead of people waiting, allowing the Lord to commission them and to send them out. And this is where we have a problem at. Now, just like you said, the word was with God. That is John 1. And the word was God. Let us look right here. We always say the scripture, but we're going to keep saying it. Isaiah 57 and 15. Look at God, the Father, telling us who was with him. For thus says the high and lofty one, which inhabit eternity. This is the Father. He is the high and lofty one that inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in a high and holy place with him also, that is of a contrite and humble spirit, to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite one. For I will not contend forever, neither will I always be mad. For the spirit should fill before me and the souls which I have made. So as we go back in here and we look at a deeper contrast of what the Father is telling us, as he says he dwelt in a high and holy place with Jesus, who has a contrite spirit and a humble heart, and he's ready to send him to you to revive you. If you are repentant and you have a humble heart, he is ready to send him to you. Jesus said in John 64, 644, no man can come to me unless my father who sent me draw you to me. Now, the thing that people don't understand is this word that was with God is a living being. This is where they're trembling up at. And if you go to 1 Corinthians 5 and 8, it will tell you there is only one God and one Lord Jesus Christ and there is not in every man that knowledge. Amen. <laughs> Amen. That's, exactly That's very what true. It I like the Amen. way you put that, Brother Derek. Is that um, it, the the uh, the word is a living being. It it right. it's our instruction. It's our guidance. Right. You know, it's what we should be praying about. It, it's how we should be recognizing. How we're being deceived by the world and by right. princip principalities in, in the spiritual world, you know. Yeah, it's just amazing Amen. how much the word can do. It is right. so, so powerful. powerful. Just yeah. Like Dwayne, just like Dwayne always says, Sister Lindy, that we need to go back to basics. There's nothing wrong with that. Yes, God I agree. God so loved the world. That yes. he is his only begotten son, that whoever Amen. should believe on him shall not perish. You got to Amen. believe that his death, burial, resurrection, and still seated on exactly. the right because he's making it for us. You can't deny exactly. him he's the father. I agree 100%. All yeah. through John 5, and let you know the father has life within himself, so has he given me to have life in myself. The father mm -hmm. judges no man but have committed all judgment unto the Son. This is a living yeah. being. Yes, yes. That same living being in Luke 24 was received up in heaven. Yes. There are three that bear a record in heaven. The Father, yes. the Word, which is Jesus, and the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And these three are one. Amen. But many people yes, take they that are. out of the court because they're not understanding that those three are one because they're one united in spirit. Or right. united in on the same thing, on one accord. There ain't no different yeah. understandings. No, no. A lot of people don't understand at Corinthians that there's many members in that one body of Christ. Yeah, there is. I understand that. That's important. Because if you follow yeah. the perception of people who had never really had their encounter with Jesus, Jesus would tell you. If you knew me, you should have known my father also. That's because when the father draws you to Jesus, 
Jesus is going to let you know who the father is. It's in straight line. It's the reason why, look, at, but the father is the ancient of times. In God's time, and Jesus is going to deliver the kingdom back up to the ancient of times. That's the father. Many people don't understand in Matthew 28, 18, Jesus tells them, his apostles, all power have been given unto me in heaven and in earth. That's because when he walked the earth, he had the power. And look it, he's still on the right hand side of the Father now in heaven, interceding for us. If he wasn't, you can't get a breakthrough to the Father. That's why we say in Jesus' name. Because he is still interceding. And also he lets you know if you deny me in front of man, when you get to heaven in front of his holy angels, he's going to deny you in front of the Father because he's still interceding for us. Listen, I don't know nobody that's 2,000 years old. Right. For the right. point I'm making about that, anybody born after that, this is who Jesus is interceding for. Right. This is the whole purpose of him every day. Going with the idea of dying for us. Listen, he didn't have to. Right, right, right. <laughs> didn't have to at all. But but right. he didn't have to. But if he didn't have if he didn't do it, we wouldn't be having this discussion. Right, right. That's a that's not a need for us if he don't do the if Jesus don't die on the cross, ain't no need for us. I, I need that I need that explained to me. You hear me? Right. You know, all these people talking about there ain't no God. Well, listen, without Jesus dying, how we get here? Right. Amen. Let's right. talk about that one. How we got here? <laughs> Amen. Some, Amen. Somebody know somebody gotta know something. Right. Exactly. Ain't nobody talking about that though. Ain't nobody right. saying nothing like that. Yeah, they they yeah, people don't want to talk. They only want to talk about, you know, what, what's entertaining to them. And that's their journey. That's because we're not caught yeah. up on all the people, whoever come. As long as you can see the truth and you're getting the truth. The people got we have to get out of their mentality that our truth is just because a bunch of people are flocking there. <laughs> if you know this Bible and you know how the way God works, God has never needed a crowd. Just like with Gideon, send all of them home that got something they want to do. God will take a few people and defeat the whole nation. <laughs> There's many people who left because they're following the crowd, and that's okay. Instead sorry, of following yo. the word, they're following the crowd. There's not going to be many people at the word. Hey, that's a good story. I'm sorry, y'all laugh. <laughs> but that, listen. Because the way of destruction is broad and I'm the way of salvation is narrow. Was it David? Was it David or was it Gideon? He said, How many of them you see down there lapping like dogs? Oh, no, that's Gideon. Gideon. Send them all. Send thing, them all. Yeah. Send them all home. Right. right. I don't need a crowd. I don't need that many. I don't want man to feel like right. they did nothing. Right. Huh? Man. I don't want to, come on, man. I don't, look at David. <laughs> look at David. Amen. The man Lord. after God's own heart. <laughs> David was a wretched man. David took Uriah. He wrote a note for you, Riot, to bring back to uh, the the general of the army. Yo, here's what the ahead. notes. Here's what the note. Here's what the note. David tell him, tell you, Riot, don't allow this note to offend him. But here's what the note says: right. Put you, Riot, in the thickest of the fight. Back everybody else up. Right. Right. Kill him. Right. But as a this history, right. kill him. Right. David killed him yeah. and took his wife. David killed him and took his wife. Mm -hmm. And right after that happened, God sent somebody to David. Right. And the way he explained the par yeah. the way the parable went to David, right. it was about a man and his one little lamb. Mm. And David said, "Who is it? So I can kill him now." And Nathan said, it's you. You have to. <laughs> Man, you're getting good. You're getting good. You, you know what I'm saying? See, right. so 
don't matter where you at in your life right now. You still breathing, you still got a chance. Matter of fact, listen, you robbing somebody of their fruit. You got something somebody need because you still here. We still here. We got something somebody need. I like that, Brother Dwayne. As we look out on the internet, just so you can know your ways, if people are not delivering you the unadulterated word, all these antics, all these backbitings, all these gossip channels, all of these humorous stations, run from that. That is Satan trying to get you to dumb down the word. You should be getting the pure, unadulterated word where you can know your way, understand it. Philippians 2 and 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. The Lord let us know, no coarse jesting. That means no playing around in the word. But when you look out today, people playing around in the word, got the antics going with these new apps. Remember, Satan caters to these new apps. Or you can push a button and I dare you. And all these different funny antics that people are doing. This is Satan. Satan is trying to dumb down the word to make you have a fiasco show instead of getting the pure, unadulterated word. It don't need no help. This word don't need no help. You don't got to do all the antics to please the crowd, to draw people in. Let the spirit draw them in. <clears throat> hey Amen. You know what I was just thinking about? Um, Satan. God and Satan, <laughs> you must have not trusted. You must have not tried my trusted servant, Joe. I love that. But you right. know, you know how long Satan been going to and fro. Yeah, Satan been going to and fro since Adam and Eve days. Satan told Eve, "Did God tell you you will surely die?" She was like, "Yeah, you know you ain't gonna surely die." See God, right. see Satan, see he been running through the world. He been running. Yeah. He been trying his hand. Right. Listen, matter of fact, we on his we on his playground. Mm -hmm. All he doing is having his way. Right. How do you defeat that? Mm -hmm. Through the word. The word. Right. Iron sharpens iron. Find like minded brothers. Where you getting fed at, sisters? Where you getting fed at? Remember, saints, through fair speeches, and there's great orators out there. Don't get me wrong. I'm not taking anything away from them. But this is what the power of Christ tells us to be careful for. Because this is the kind of stuff that can draw you off sides. You'll think you will be in Christ, but actually you've allowed for Satan and his seducing minions to draw you to something else. That's why it's important. The unadulterated word. You don't need all the antics. You don't need all the the crowds, you don't need that. You don't need all of that. You should run the other way. Now, as we get out of here, we're going to point to another scripture. At Lamentations 3 and 24 through 26. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to them that wait for him. It's okay to tarry in Jerusalem. What Jesus told his apostles. All this is saying to us an understanding is to wait at the word of God. Wait until the Lord come with, to you and you're going to be endued with power to go forth and preach and teach his word. He's going to unlock you in the understanding realm, give you a clean heart and a renewed spirit and to send you forth with your measure of your faith. Amen. But we don't, Amen. Want, to, we don't want to wait now, Dave. We got people that are getting money off YouTube. They're getting lucrative money off YouTube. They're getting YouTube. They're exploiting the gospel. What Jesus already said in Matthew went to Capernaum after he fed the 5,000, which was more than that. But after he fed them, they followed him to Capernaum. And Jesus had to let them know, you seek me because, not because of the loaves and you were filled, but you seek me because you basically want to exploit the gospel. And that is what people are doing today. They're getting platforms to draw people after themselves. Be careful of these people. And the reason why it's important that you can't just sit up, and that's why you see me on the station, I just put out what they say. See, that's apologetics. Somebody denying Jesus, I, I show you. I cut it and show you what they say. 
it does the work for you. I don't got to doctor it up and do all no different antics around what there's. This is what they said. They're denying Jesus. But when you don't know Jesus yourself, you will be allowing these people to lead you. And the reason why it's so important that you understand who you are following, because the blind leading the blind, mm. they both will fall in the ditch. You have no excuse for following somebody that God is telling you they're false. God is showing you through people their fault. But if you don't listen because you like something else about what they say, then guess what? You go to where they go. There ain't going to be no duo. <clears throat> hey, another reason Jesus was hated. Everybody Jesus talked to was struggling with something. There's one story that's in my head right now. This woman. They say, that is an adulterous woman. Why are you talking to her? And Jesus looked at him at the crowd, and he just kept writing in the rocks. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, if she's so much of an adulterous woman, how about this here? Any of y'all that have not committed a sin, cast the first stone. <laughs> right on the ground. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Cast the first stone. And I'll wait. And don't you know? And nobody picks no stone. What? Right? right? Jesus said, sister, send no more. Go home. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? See, this is what Jesus was headed for, right? Right, right. Right. He loved all. He came for the sick. Anything that you're struggling with, it doesn't matter. He wants you. We ain't perfect. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, sister. Go ahead. I, I was just going to say, you know, my relationship with Jesus is so important to me. I'm not casting any stones at anybody. I have no right to yeah. judge, and you shall be judged. Amen. We're all going to have, at one point, we're all going to stand. Amen. God and and account for everything Amen. we've done. We all yeah. fall short of the glory. Right. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. <laughs> we all fall short now, sometimes. Now, this is the point. <laughs> this is the point, Sister Lindy and Dwayne. When Dwayne was making that point about the lady that was taken in adultery, you got a whole bunch of Pharisee people that was pointing the finger at her, but in their temple, all they're doing is swindling the people, selling the oxen. Anyway, they're not clean or worthy to be pointing the finger at anybody. So let's we got to understand when the Holy Ghost is coming to you now, can nobody teach the mind of Christ? That's Christ in that man. Point Amen. Amen. So that's why we're saying wait on your salvation, wait on the power so you can be endued because that is Christ in you working. Amen. And when Christ Amen. liberated Amen. her and told her to run on, he didn't leave her without power to be able to refrain from sinning again. See, you have to have your contact with Jesus. It's what to Amen. show you. Amen. Amen. And when Christ sends you on, you're going to be filled up with the power, staying connected with the word. God is going to be telling you. Remember like John 16? Where was that at? John 16 and 7. Remember John 16 and 7. When he has come, he will be you hear me? Reproving the world of sin because they didn't believe on me. See, when you come in contact with this, it ain't going to be you doing the work. It ain't going to be doing you, you doing the work. It's going to be Christ in you doing the work. And he's going to be reproving. But since people don't know the spirit of Christ, they think it's you reproving and correcting people. But no, that's spirit in an individual could be if they partook of the Holy Ghost. That is pointing things out. So right here at John 17, 16, I mean it's 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. This is Jesus speaking to his apostles. It is beneficial for you that I go away. For if I not go away, the comforter. See, Jesus had to go away. So the comforter will come to you. And this is talking about Jesus in the flesh. He had to go the way, but he was ensuring his apostles the comforter was going to come to them. That's why he told them to tarry in Jerusalem. That's why Lamentations 3.24 tell you to wait on your salvation. Because when he come to you, guess what? You'll be having Jesus with you now in the spirit. 
Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is beneficial for you that I go away. For if I not go away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he's come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment and of sin because they do not believe on me. So this, See, is, a that, this is a righteous judge now. Because isn't that a beautiful, me. that's just a beautiful, beautiful um, sentiment and relationship that we're allowed to have with Jesus right. and the spirit, right. you know. Right. Oh, the spirit of God, that's just uh, it's so comforting and warming and right. and why wouldn't you not want that? Right, right. Right? Amen. I just, I just don't get it when people right. <laughs> you know, can't can't get the hang of it. I, I don't know. Right. <laughs> Amen. This is why we continue to perfect our walk. When we get that power of Christ to not sin no more, this is not saying that we're not going to make no mistakes while we're going on our journey, while Jesus is perfecting us, while the Holy Spirit exactly. is perfecting us. Exactly. Why it's perfecting us, look it. It says, a disciple is not above his master. This is what Jesus is telling us. But right. he shall be as his master. Meaning you can right. make those calls. Because that's Jesus right. in you. That's the Holy Ghost in you. Telling right. you to point things out. Because that's him working in you. Exactly. Just, just make sure that master, just make sure the log is out of your eye before you try right. to go to your brother's side and take Amen. out the back. Yeah. That's what, and that's the Amen. power of what we're waiting on. Christ to come in our life so he can begin to start taking the log out of our eye. Once Amen. the log is taken out of your eyes, Christ is in you pointing things out. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You just make sure you don't have a cigarette in your mouth. Telling somebody mm -hmm. not to smoke. Right. Amen. Well, what's well, funny about it, you get to see it. Right. You get to recognize it. You get to recognize it when you know it's been pulled from you. Right, right, right. Just like you were saying earlier, Dwayne, you're right. Stuff can start being pulled from you. Christ will start, man, remember I used to do that? I don't do it no more. Christ will start pulling things in your life. Now, this is where the spirit come in that, you know, once he cleaned the house out, you know, and you go out there, he look for a place where he can go. But when he seen the rain, he come back to his house and is swept out. If you let him back in, the last state of that man is worse than the first state of that man. So you don't let him back in when Jesus cleans your house out. Don't let him back in. Don't let him back on your couch, inside your heart, <laughs> inside your lungs. Don't let him have space back inside your lungs. Amen. So to finish right here at Lamentations, then we're going to go and get out of here. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him. Wait on his salvation. To the soul that seeketh him. While you're waiting, you're seeking him. You're fellowshipping. You're connected. You're not out trying to teach people the gospel and you barely understand it yourself. This is how Satan is using people to twist things up. There's nothing wrong with you saying, man, we're in a good study learning. You brother, if you want, you feel like it, you know, here's the link. Not you trying to twist half of everything up and then trying to send somebody over to somewhere, and then Satan gets a hold of them by the time they get home and say, man, I'm not going to that study. This dude just taught, twisted this word up in that word, so their word must be like that. See, that's why you got to be careful. Wait on your salvation. When you wait on your salvation, the Lord come unto you, he's going to lock in the spirit for your measure, for you to have the measure of his word and to bring it out clearly to them, to the soul that seeketh him, it is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. Quietly wait for it. Not up spewing what you think you know or what you think you understand, twisting and turning people. Don't be doing that while you're waiting on the Lord. It's important. Because this is a spiritual word right here. And this is why so many people are stuck. And we're going to get into this word one day. It's been reported out of Corinthians, out of the house of Chloe. That is contention in the church. And the reason why that is because some follow Paul, some follow Apollos, and some follow Cephas. These are carnal people who don't know Jesus. That's why they follow man. They follow denomination because they're carnal. See, I don't need to go sit up in no denomination building when Jesus ain't there because I had contact with the spirit. And you ain't going to know that unless you have contact with the spirit. If not, until then, you'll sit up and give all your money away 
and sit up in a place that ain't even of God. You're not supposed to be joining no building anyway. Jesus already made this clear several times when he went down to the feast. When they seen the, the Jesus healing, Jesus didn't commit himself to them. That's joining because he knew what was in man's heart. So if you're following Jesus, how can you go commit yourself to them? <laughs> I made that mistake coming into faith. I was young in the faith. I didn't know. But when I got in that situation, Jesus was teaching me. And like a right now, like he was teaching me in that moment what to do, what not to do. It was beautiful. So I thought I was there. But Jesus had me there showing me why I was in that place. And I never join anywhere else again because you take Jesus with you when he's in your heart. You don't have to be combined to no building to be of God. Don't get me wrong. If there's a place where you can go fellowship and Christ is there, that is an awesome thing. But today we're living in a world where people have their, if you see it online, they have merchandise. They have made the building into a mockery. Why would you want to be there? Why would you want to be someplace that Jesus is not there? Why would you want to be somewhere where it's a fashion show and it's all about merchandising, the homosexuals is up singing, the, the gang members is up preaching? The, the, no. 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. But such were some of you. But you have been delivered. Hallelujah. So mm -hmm. once you come in contact with the power, then you can get up there. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's important. If you don't do it that way, then we have a mockery going. Then we have a system where people who don't have the right spirit up there. And that's important. That's where we've lost our way at. You know, the world tells you you got to go to theology school. When 1 Samuel 16 and 7, God already told Samuel, who was looking at Jesse's strong sons, I have refused them. Man, look on the outward appearance. God looks on the heart. All the accolades, all the school of theology, all of that is outward appearance. That's building up the flesh, making the flesh adorned to look all like it's something. But the Lord tell us, don't glory in that. Glory in Jesus. Amen. Amen. Don't glory in this flesh. <laughs> glory in Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. The carnality can't teach the spirit. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> Amen. Any last words, anybody? This is a good study today, definitely. Yeah, really good study. Thank you, Amen. Brother Terry. Like we always said. Thank you, Brother T, and thank Amen. you, like on Devon. Day, and I will thank scatter God. thee among the heathen, that disperse thee in the countries, and I will consume thy filthiness out of thee. This is the second covenant. You come in contact with the Holy Ghost because you've been getting to know Jesus' word. The Father that drew you to Jesus. You, you know the Holy Ghost has entered into your life. It's going to consume thy filthiness out of thee. Look at the stuff that's going to be taking place. You're not going to be dealing with the world in that way. God is going to be moving things out of your life, stuff that you used to do, cleaning you up. Among the heathen, he said, they're going to be able to look at you, those that don't know God, and they're going to be like, man, there's something about him. I want to know his God. That's why it starts now. And thou shalt take thine inheritance in thyself, in the sight of the heathen, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord. So you see, your inheritance starts when you partake of the Holy Ghost, in the sight of the heathen. That's how they are drew, like Dwayne was saying. I, who, if we all left now because we're all perfect and Jesus perfected us, who's going to be out here to, to let the rest of the people see that God is working? So exactly. they can be delivered. Right. Exactly. Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. Like we always said, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus on the third day, thou shalt be saved. Then go and get baptized. It's important. You know that you go and get baptized. John 3 and 5, Jesus let us know no man can enter into the kingdom of God unless he's been born by water and by spirit. Hallelujah. Thus says the same. The Lord say the same this week on the men's study. We're going to be looking at how God has yoked chosen but the base things of this world to confound the wise of this world 
The wise of this world is nothing, you guys. You own them. If you are of Christ, you own them. You will judge them. Amen. That's something to be excited about. You are in the spiritual realm and you own them. Amen. You will judge them. I know it looks like they got this and that going, but guess what? It is coming to naught. That's scary. When you can really see that in the spiritual realm, how you've been chosen by God and how all the things you're looking at and people celebrating, thinking that they're doing something, but they're going to come to naught. That's scary. Very. For them. You're scared for them because they don't yeah. understand. That's why it's so important for us to pray for one another. Mm -hmm. Man. Amen. Right, Sister Lindy. Prayer is good. But boy, what happened when you can't pray no more? I know, right? Man, we'd be lost. We would be you know, lost. Like, There's a lot of people that, you know, you, we we all want the best for. Right. But we yeah. got to remember this. A lot of my people going to perish for the lack mm. of knowledge. Mm. Yeah. Man. I didn't write that. <laughs> No, <laughs> right. they gotta wonder for themselves. Hallelujah. I mean, we could do only so much, but they gotta wonder for themselves. But you should be able to see yourself in the scripture. You have chosen the debased things of this world to confound the wise. We are considered debased. We're not the big high theologians that go to school that claim they know God. We're not the big doctors of this world. We're not the big scientists of this world that think they know the world, controlling the. We're not that. But guess who? What? Jesus said he has chosen the debased things, that's us at the bottom, to confound them. The reason why God has done that, because just like Dwayne was saying earlier, you know how God get the glory? By taking a nobody and making him somebody in front of these people who think that they are somebody. Man. Hey, you know, man. I am who he says I am. Right, right. Mm -hmm. God don't want you nothing if you got more, all these big degrees. God right. don't want you if you got all of these big things and think you know this and no God don't right. think you, you. you know God's the one who gave me any knowledge that I have. Yeah. He's the one who helped me get through school. He's the one yeah. that helped me. You know, I, I did not do that on my own. Right. There's no way. That's part of my testimony, folks. Mm -hmm. Anyway, y'all take care of yourself and um uh, I pray God keeps us and and, God and us. brings us back together next week, okay? Yeah. Hey, I was just thinking about this gospel song. Um, I, I, I ain't a singer. I make up my own words. I don't care what kind of song it is. <laughs> but I don't know who sing it, but the song goes, I know the chorus goes, I'm just a nobody yeah. <laughs> trying to tell everybody Oh, oh yeah, I know somebody. Yeah, ain't yeah, like anybody. Yeah. And I'm telling you, man, yeah. <laughs> that's yep. real. It is. Amen. Man, you guys have a good, wonderful evening, brother Dwayne. Pray us out when you get a chance. You guys have a good, wonderful week, and um, just pray for our family. Pray for your family. Pray for the onlookers. Pray for as we move in this dark time. That people, you know, bring themselves closer to the word because that's the only thing that saves. And what I mean in word, remember the word comes with action, even myself. You know, pray that I strengthen up in my life. You know, it's a hard task being called to God when you know within yourself you have flaws. But God wasn't looking at that when he chose me because he gave you the ability and you the ability to work those things out in the course of its time. But it's still challenging for us. Because we know that they are there. Do you hear me? Mm -hmm. and, and, yeah. and as we continue to be encouraged in the word, we continue to go forth in the word, God is holding us. He has to be. Because there would be no way you would be at a living word each week after week if he wasn't. There would be no way that you would be proclaiming the gospel if he wasn't. This is a real word right here. A real right now word here. Like, um, for instance, you just, you done pulled me all the way out of the gutter and then left me. Huh? No, 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 no. That is impossible. 
<laughs> and it's just and see that's where it comes back with the scripture of reminding you. You know, the Holy Ghost reminding you, he who started the good thing will bring it to manifestation. So he's not gonna leave you. I don't care how weary you get, I don't care how in the spirit no. you don't feel his presence no more. I don't care yeah. how in this you don't feel that no more. He yeah. who started the good thing is not gonna let you go. Come on, man. That's yes, almost man. like him introducing you to the power and beginning to fix you up. And didn't abandon you. Why would he waste that type of time on you? And he already knew from the beginning what you was going to do. That's right. Ooh, woo. right. So there would be no need. Now the things of the of of not being able to feel that presence like you did, and not being able to 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 have this or that like you did, and because God is doing a thing. Yeah. And that thing yeah. is, without His presence, are you still going to be obedient? Without His presence. Though. Are you still going to be faithful? Yes. See, it's yes. okay to be faithful while I'm yes. sitting here and you know I'm watching you. I'm, I'm watching you. Right. What you going to do when I ain't watching? And even though he's still watching, but I'm just saying, using this as a paraphrase. What you gonna no, it's a true thing, though. See, what you going to do if you see. can't feel his presence? Are you still going to be? Are you going to still profess my name? Right. Hey, listen. 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 Yes, sir. I know what people saying, but what are you saying? You know when you ask that to Pete in there, huh? What do you tell people? What do you tell people I am to you? Huh? What are you going to say, right? See, this, and this is the purpose of studying the word, right? Because look, once you get in it, there's some stuff out here waiting on you. It ain't just coming like where you are in your life right now, in the word, right. this is not an accident. <laughs> when you go to school, you go to school for a purpose. Right. This is a purpose. Right. Beyond our, beyond self. Yeah. It may have started off with trying to get self right, but mm -hmm. as you get in it and grow, mm -hmm. you see more than just self. So, Father God, we like to thank you for allowing us to come together tonight, Father God, in your name, Lord. Continue studying on your name, Father. Continue building our relationship with you, Lord. Lord, we ask you, Father, that you continue uplifting us. Keep encouraging us, Father, to be better men and women for your sake, Father God, for your will, for our life. Don't allow us to mislead, misguide, or cause any harm to any one of our brothers and sisters, Father God. Father, we ask you, Father, that you continue to keep your unchanging hand placed upon us, Lord. Keep using us, Father, how you see the fit. Remove anything away from us that is not of you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the families that you have blessed us with, Father God. Blood family and out of blood family, Father God. You told us you knew us before we were conceived in our mama's womb. That means you had already had a family for us, Lord. Allow us to connect with that family just as much as we want to connect with our blood family, Father God, because without you giving your only begotten son, we would not be here. Mm -hmm. We don't want Jesus' death to be in vain, Father. Father, we ask you, Lord, that you continue working in our life, Lord. Whoever needs a healing, whether it's mentally, physically, or spiritually, Father, we are, you are the only healer that we should be seeking, Father. Father, for every person that is here tonight, for every person that's going to watch later, Lord, Keep your unchanging hands upon our life, Father God. Continue, Father God. Whatever you're doing, continue doing it, Father God. Whatever you're going to do, Father, make sure it's done for your will, not ours. Amen. We are nothing. Yeah. We thank you, Father, for everything in your son, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The Lord say the same. Next week, we're going to get in the heavy Amen. Time. If the Lord say the same, we're going to get in the heavy topic next Tuesday. And it is about the Holy Ghost. Now remember 1 John 4, 1 through 3. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit to see whether they're of God, because many false spirits or prophets have gone out. Now, when you encounter people, 
you are supposed to be doing being a fruit inspector. You are supposed to be doing a spirit inspection. This is it's imperative. Now, how do are we going to know if we receive the correct spirit? Simply, if you go down in that verse, it will tell you that the individual will believe that Jesus walked the earth. Now, when Jesus walked the earth and he was risen by the Father, he went on to go be back in glory on the right-hand side of this Father. If anybody is not confessing that, the next scripture after that tells you who they are. They are the Antichrist. I don't care how you want to look at it. I don't care how you think they can preach or how you think their holiness. It doesn't matter. Don't be deceived by that. Scripture already lets it know, plain and simple, if in order for you to believe that Jesus walked to earth, you got to believe also that he is seated on the right-hand side of his father. Because if the father raised him up from the dead, guess what? He didn't die again. <laughs> Hallelujah. And if he did die again, guess what? Me or you couldn't have salvation because he is the one that intercedes for us to the father to this very day. That's how holy the father is. You have to pray in his name. You want anything from the father, you have to do it through the one whom he has reconciled us to, to him. And that's through Jesus. He basically made a way for us. But since people don't have the understanding of know who this holy God is, they don't understand. The father literally has made a way for us through his son, who is a living being, who was God in the flesh, and he's spirit. Hallelujah. You hear where he was 100% man and he was 100% God? That is true. We just read a scripture in Isaiah 57. I dwell in a high and holy place with him also. See, God is so beautiful that you... If he don't let you in in the story, then you ain't going to know it. But then since we hear another word that's different from ours, we think, oh, that ain't true. Mine's is true. Don't do that. Don't counsel anybody out. Listen to that word. Make sure you know your way. If an individual don't believe that Jesus was taken back up in heaven by his father and is seated on the right-hand side, like Romans 8, 34 says, you better get away from him. I don't care because they talk slick or what kind of words they know. Jesus didn't call you to that. That's why he tells us in his word, I believe that's a John 5, 39. Search the scripture. For in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. So there's people that proclaim in Jesus' name, swear up and down they got eternal life. You ain't searched the scripture. Make sure that you believe like basic John 3, 16 said, God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that whoever shall believe on him shall not perish. You don't, it don't say to believe that he's the father. It don't say that believe that it's only one in heaven that's just him. No, it says that believe that God sent his son. And if you get into the rest of the scripture, you will see that God sent his son to show us the way and rose him from the dead and received him up in heaven. And Romans 38 will let you know, 34, I should say, will let you know that he is seated, still making intercession for us. That's the fullness of the death, burial, and resurrection. Anything short of that, you're the Antichrist. Don't be deceived. That means you're against Christ. That means you have not been called by Christ. But since there is many false prophets that have gone out, guess what they're going to tell you? They've been sent by Christ. Amen. That's one thing that they all have in common, is they're going to tell you that they know Christ. But this is how you can differentiate that they are none of his because he is seated on the right-hand side. So in other words, if you don't believe that there is another in heaven, you ain't none of his, plain and simple. Ain't no ifs, ands, and buts about it. You guys have a good night and be blessed. That's the mystery. That's what Amen. the Pharisees was mad at. Amen. Of Jesus you know the saying he's the son of the father. That is Amen. what it was because there's another in heaven. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, it's crazy about that too, right? Because the, listen, the devil know the word just as good. You hear me? But what you're saying is the fruit that de that that determines you if you're getting good fruit or not. Right, right. When you ask him, "Hey, who is Jesus? Right. Where's Jesus? Right. How do you how do you view Jesus?" Right. 
Right. When you ask, how do you view Jesus? Mm-hmm. See, 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 Jesus. Yeah. Oof, Jesus people, turned that's things. Question, that's Listen, question. Jesus turned things. Jesus made people upset. Mm-hmm. People get upset when you talk to Jesus. You know, right. he's a prophet, right? You know what I'm saying? He's a who? Jesus. Right. Like, what, like, did him or something. Jesus. What the word. Jesus. Did anything good come out of Nazareth? Right, right. Huh? <laughs> what Jesus told him? Oh, you believe now because you see me? Right, right. right. <laughs> Man, it's imperative, yeah. imperative that we put our all into this. We have to do with our soul. Not our flesh, but our soul. It's our and life. This is our this is, the, some this is the life here. we're going to. Huh? Dwayne? This is the life that we go into, right? You know, we think we live in life here. No. Don't store up for here. Store up for where you're going. Right. Because well, this come to an end. Here. The scripture's clear. There's people that's going to be make it, make it through here that was wicked and I don't know what what. Because the word said, there'll be some of you that are standing here shall not see death until the Son of Man come in the cloud. Guess what that means? There's going to be some false prophet still here. All the way trying to persuade you to the end. to Come with them to hell. But guess what? Their souls are going to be damned when Jesus cracked that sky and come back. Then they'll see true death when their spirit is cast down. Amen. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. Hallelujah. You guys have a good night. God bless you. Have a good week. Um, next week, Saturday, we'll definitely be going to see Lemuel. We send out um, the invite. Respond to it, yay or nay. Just to let us know if you're coming or not, just so we can get a count and know how many people is going to be at the facility. You know, that's important. You know, we don't want to flood it if so many people can come, which is cool. We have a few, you know, all are invited, but just let us know ahead of time. It's definitely going to be a special occasion to do the work of the Lord. Hallelujah. As we increase in our life, know who lifted you. Know who lifted you up. God is allowing things to go forth. Some people are getting lifted up in their jobs, in their finances, in their home. But as they increase, the love of God decreases in them. Now they stop fellowshipping. Now they stop coming. Watch out for that. That's the plan of Satan. That's the plan. That ain't no different from in Luke when Jesus healed the, the 10 people and only one came back. Hold up. What happened to connecting yourself to Jesus? The fellowship. What happened to connecting yourself to study? What happened? Because they got what they wanted and kept going. But Jesus is looking at you, not us. We see you, but you got to be worried about the one who sees you more. Hallelujah. You guys have a good night. You too, brother. God bless you, y'all. Good word, brother. Good word for the night, Jeremy. I like this. Oh, yeah, boy. Right. That's good food. That's good food right there, boy. I've been looking for this all day, to be honest with you, Jeremy. Yeah. I need this. I needed this, man. I'm telling you, bro, it's crazy out here. It's crazy out here right now, bro, especially on this internet, bro. It's crazy, bro. Like, you know. I end up going to put that up. I'll let you know. You know, if you're having the win, it looks like they got a lot, a lot coming up. I've seen it on my own eyes. Bro, it's crazy, bro. You hear me? Yeah. Hey, bro, look, I've been like, you know what? I'm thirsty. I'm home. I need this word in my life. Yeah. Well, listen, like, because it's scary, man. You know, like, right. the things that's scary to me, though, is like the stuff they're saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, what? Sure. I think, I think, I think will get me the most. I think will get me the most. Look. You know, and I told you this before, like, one of my biggest things is misleading people, man. Man, I don't get up. I can't, how am I going to get up here and say I'm going to mislead all these people? Mm-hmm. You know, I think about this scripture here. Hey, anyone mislead Millstone. these little ones, right. it's better you have a millstone oh. dropped on your head, dropped on around your neck, bro. That's scary. Bro, how you... How you get out here and how you get out here and mislead these people like this? That's why if I wouldn't call it, I wouldn't be up here at all. I'm telling you, I wouldn't be up here at all because it's detrimental to your soul. It's detrimental to 
man, it's imperative. But you guys be blessed. You have a good night. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.